Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is check out app images. An app image is a form of software delivery. It's basically an all-in-one package, a universal package. You download it, run it, and it's as simple as that. In this video, what I'm going to do is teach you everything that you need to know to use app images. You'll know what they are in the first place, how they work, and why you might want to consider using app images over other types of Linux packaging. Now, if you're not already familiar with the concept, universal packages are a relatively new concept in Linux, and the idea is to have software being packaged in a way where the distro doesn't matter. So that effectively means you could have one application and it could run on just about any distribution. And this approach is great for developers too, because it takes the distro out of the equation. So if someone is developing an app for Linux, then they only need to develop one thing to target the entirety of the Linux community. And then when it comes to you, the user, you benefit because it doesn't matter which distribution you run, your choice is respected. You could use anything you want and then you could bring your applications with you. And app images are one of three main types of universal packages. We have snap packages, flat packs, and of course, app images. I already have videos in this series on snap packages and flat packs, so I'll leave a card for the snap video right about here if you wanna check that out. Anyway, I can't wait to dive in, but before I do, I need to take a moment and let you guys know that I have two brand new courses available over on Udemy. First, if you're in the process of learning Linux for the very first time, you should definitely check out my Linux Essentials course. Not only will this course teach you everything you need to know to get started and learn the basics of Linux, it's also going to help you get certified and earn your Linux Essentials credential through LPI. And the Linux Professional Institute is the world's largest Linux and open source focused vendor neutral certification body. So by earning certifications through LPI, your credentials will be recognized around the world. But even if you don't have any interest in getting certified, this course is still a great fit for those of you that are getting started with Linux because it'll teach you all the basics. Also, I recently released an Ansible course as well, which will teach you everything you need to know to get up and running with Ansible. Ansible is one of, if not the most popular configuration and automation platforms in the Linux ecosystem. So it's definitely something that you need to learn. Ansible is a powerful and easy to learn platform that'll enable you to automate even the most complicated Linux administration tasks. And just like with my Linux course, each lesson will break down even the most complicated components and concepts into easy to understand lessons. And by the end of the course, you'll learn everything that you need to know to use Ansible as part of your daily tool set. And as usual, thank you guys so much for supporting Linux learning. I really appreciate that. Now it's time to dive into app images and learn all about them. So let's get started. So here we have an app image. Now at first it doesn't look like much, but believe it or not, this one file is a complete application, specifically Caden Live. Caden Live is an application you could use to edit video. In fact, I've used Caden Live for many of the videos on this channel before switching to DaVinci Resolve. Now this particular app image I downloaded from the official website. So one thing to know about app images is that they could come from just about anywhere. Often you'll find app images on a developer's website when they're making a program available. And it's not all that dissimilar to Windows and Mac OS. When you discover a new application, you download it, you install it. But in this case, we have an app image. So how do we go about running this? Well, the first thing we need to do is right click on it. Then we'll check the properties. And this might look different for you depending on your desktop environment, but basically we wanna to go to permissions and we want to allow executing as a program. So I'll check this right here. And that's all we need to do to make an app image work. Seriously, that's it. So all we have to do is just click on it like we would any other application. So right here, we have Caden Live. How cool is that? Now, one thing to point out is that I've created a directory called applications. It's very common when you use app images to want to save them all in one place. It doesn't really matter where you save them. You could even save them in your home directory on your desktop. It doesn't really matter. But what I like to do is create a folder, a parent directory, basically where all of my app images are going to live. So we only have this one right here. So how do we go about downloading an app image? 
As I mentioned, one of the most popular places to find an app image is the official website for whatever application you're trying to install. So let's bring up a web browser. And here we have the browser. So what I'm going to do is just search for Bitwarden. And then here's the official website. So I'll click on that. What we'll do is go to download, scroll down a bit here. And you can see that we have downloads for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So what I'm going to do is click on Linux. And already I'm downloading an app image. Seriously, check this out. By default, Bitwarden is released as an app image. It's not the only way that you could install Bitwarden, but it is a popular way. And it's available right from the developer's website, so we know it's official. We always want to make sure that we're downloading applications from official sources, and it doesn't get any more official than the official website for the product. So let's go ahead and go back to our file manager here. And what I'm doing right now is just grabbing it from my downloads directory and I'm pasting the app image into my applications directory. And now we have it. So just like before, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go down to properties. Let's allow executing as a program. We'll close it. We'll just simply click on it. And there you go, Bitwarden is now running. I didn't install it, so there's no installation procedure. All I had to do was download the app image, make it executable, and I'm done. And that's one of the main benefits of the app image format. There's no runtime or anything to install or set up first. You just simply run an app image and that's it. Now, when you compare app images to, you know, snap packages and flat packs, those formats tend to be a little bit heavier. Now, I like all the formats, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you should pick one over the other, but what I'm saying though, is that there are clear differences. For example, when it comes to snap packages, there's the snap store. So when you want to download a snap package in that format, you have to download it from the snap store. You also have to have snapd installed as well. So in that case, there is something that you need to install first. When it comes to flat pack, you don't have to get flat packs from the flat hub app store quote unquote app store. And you do need to have flat pack installed first before you can install a flat pack. But again, with app images, you don't have to install anything. But one of the bigger downsides of the app image format is the inconsistency. For example, earlier in the video, I downloaded Caden live and I ran that. When I did so, it didn't ask me if I wanted a desktop shortcut or an application menu shortcut, it just ran. And the problem here is if I check my applications list, it's not going to be visible because it's not actually installed. And that kind of makes sense because an app image is, well, just a file, there really isn't anything to install. So that's why we don't have a desktop icon. However, some applications will ask you if you want to integrate the application, which means create a desktop or application launcher shortcut now, even though not every app image will prompt you to create an application launcher, there is a workaround and it's called App Image Launcher. And I already have it downloaded right here. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description down below, but this is going to be a distribution package this time. Note the dev format here in my case. So when you install App Image Launcher, it basically manages all of this for you. So I'm just going to install it right now. Now the package is installed but there's not really a whole lot to see. This is going to run in the background, but basically what that will do is intercept the fact that we are opening an app image. So it'll see that we're opening one. And if a launcher isn't already on the system for whatever one we're launching, it's going to give us an option to create that. So for example, what I'll do is open Caden Live again. And we see immediately that app image launcher saw that we were launching an app image and sprang into action. So right now it's going to see the folder that we're currently inside of and just assume that that's the folder where all of our app images are going to be. You could customize this and you should customize this if you want to put them somewhere else, but that's okay for me. So I'll just click okay. And right now it's offering to integrate it for us. We could run once or integrate it into our system. Run once is useful if you only plan on running an app image just one time, but if you plan on keeping it around, you might want to click this button right here. Now we see that the app image is launching. And when I try to open applications, we can see that Caden Live is listed right there. 
So as you can see, even though there's some downsides with app images, there's some easy workarounds to make it even better. Now, before I close out the video, I just wanted to show you guys one more thing, and that is the App Image Hub. So even though there's no one app store for app images, and you could also download them from the vendor's website most of the time, you'll also find app images here as well, and this might be a good place to start. So let's click Browse All Apps. And you can see that there's quite a few listed here. Now, obviously, I can't show you all of them. There's over 1,300 app images on the site. But if you're looking for a good place to start, then App Image Hub might be a great place. I'll be sure to have a link in the description down below if you want to check it out. And there you go. We just took a look at app images in this video. I love app images. They're just so cool. It's a wonder why they're not more popular. Hopefully this video will increase their popularity because I think it's definitely something that you should check out. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.